uh, I realized that I wasn't the only one suffering in my position as a federal government worker. I wanted to protest the, uh, the, the implementation of these uh, mandates for federal government workers. And I just found a, a, like it's not necessarily new or, or unique, but um, you know, something like this hasn't been done for a while. Canadian Armed Forces veteran James Tupp began marching by foot to Ottawa from British Columbia back in February to protest the federal government's vaccine mandates and COVID-19 restrictions. Over 100 days and 4,000 kilometers later, he is nearing the end of his monumental cross-country march. We here at True North have been covering James Top since the very beginning, and I had the opportunity to interview him as he walked into the city of Ottawa. You have marched 4,000 kilometers to Ottawa. You are in Ottawa now. I can uh, tell that by just the, the street signs that are from the, the Ottawa street signs, yeah. the Ottawa traffic lights. How does it feel to be at near the end of this incredible journey? Yeah, I'm, I have mixed feelings about it. I mean, at this, uh, on one hand, I'm, I'm intentionally uh, happy to, to have gotten here and made it successfully. And, and uh, I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way things turned out. And on the other hand, um, you know, I'm a bit anxious about, uh, I'm not really a, a public people person. And uh, I got to, you know, to, to get into Ottawa tomorrow, they might be a couple people watching or there might be a thousand, like, I don't know. It's, it's kind of unknown. I'm not necessarily a professional public speaker either, but I'll be expected to say a few words uh, when I, when I touch down at the war memorial, right? So, I mean, there's, you know, everything. I'm a human being, I uh, have uh, uh, these kind of uh, feelings just like anybody else, but uh, I, at the end of the day, I'm, I just, you know, we're gonna go to the war memorial and celebrate the completion of this, of this journey. And I wanna give special thanks to the guys uh, and ladies, of course, who helped me uh, get here. Cause uh, I certainly would have gotten, I would not have gotten this far this fast without their help. What was the best part of your march so far? What what stuck out to you in a positive way? You know, just meeting meeting people and the reactions. Uh, but there was there was a few times, you know, at the beginning marching, uh, you know, through the mountains on uh, Highway Three in British Columbia, and uh, looking around at the scenery and going, you know, whatever happens with all this, you know, that was fairly early on. I have some amazing. Uh, amazing scenery around me. But ultimately, as you know, we come to a close, uh, um, you know, I, I reflect on the, the people that I've met and the things that I've seen along the way with regards to, uh, you know, the landscape that we inhabit here. I've, you know, we crossed through the mountains, over the prairies on the Canadian Shield. It's been uh, pretty amazing. Absolutely. And I guess since nothing ever goes to plan, there's always, you know, imperfections in life. What, what is one thing uh, in your march that maybe didn't go as expected or that maybe stood out to you as being kind of more on the negative side? Yeah, I would say there were definitely some, you know, there was a lot of physical hardship uh, at the beginning. I've been, I've been able to, you know, I, I do this for six, eight weeks three months you get conditioned to your body adapts but there was physical hardship at the beginning uh the stress and strain of it on all of us you know we've been doing this continuously you know for 130 days and uh you, you know with so uh, with a rest day every with one rest day every five to six days so it has been um you know nothing but this and uh you know the physical challenges of doing this for 10 or 11 hours a day fortunately we're coming into this uh, and able to uh, you know take our foot off the gas so to speak so yeah um but uh 
I, I wouldn't say it was, I wasn't surprised at it, but it, it has been, you know, uh, there was times when it was a, 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 a grind, let's put it that way. Uh, the city is preparing for both your arrival and the Canada Day because there's gonna, they're expecting to have a, a good amount of people. And so they've uh, created a vehicle uh, control zone where they won't be letting in any protest vehicles into downtown. And they've also right. put up fencing around the lawn of the Supreme Court and on Parliament Hill. Uh, what do you make of that? I, I think it's a, uh, a fear-based reaction, unfortunately. It's uh, unfortunate. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I don't think that uh, the re reporting on issues like what I'm doing is, is helping at all. So it, it's kind of like, um, it, it's, it's kind of, it's saddening, I think, in a way. Uh, however, uh, we can still celebrate Canada today. Uh, there's uh, nothing stopping us from doing that and celebrate uh, what this country is and its symbols and how they draw us together. What do you have to say to those living in Ottawa that maybe watch a lot of the legacy media and that are, are fearful of freedom rallies and freedom events coming for Canada Day? They don't want to see another uh, convoy. Whatever, whatever they think the uh, you know the freedom thing, or freedom protests or freedom movement is and isn't, um, you know, uh, I don't think they have anything to fear from me or the the people marching with me. I've made it very clear uh, that I am coming there to visit. Uh, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier on the War Memorial is uh, part of my legacy and um, you know my heritage. I am a veteran. I'm actually still serving in the armed forces. So uh, you know. I'm uh, going there to pay respect to the veterans that uh, decided to stand up with protesters in January and February. I'm going to pay respects to the veterans that came before me uh, since this Canada, since this country of Canada was created. And, um, and I'm going to celebrate the completion of this journey. That's, that's what I'm there to do. Let's talk about your meeting. Uh... I attended this, that meeting. There was a, a good amount of member parliaments, but there was still, it wasn't uh, hundreds and there was only conservative members of parliament. Are, are you still satisfied with the amount of people that showed up to your meeting? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, this is how it's supposed to work, okay? Uh, they have constituencies. Uh, I reached out to everybody that I passed by on my march here. And because we're only marching at six kilometers an hour, there's plenty of people who felt the same way I did, they thought it would be uh, uh, a, a good thing if uh, their members of parliament, their representatives came to talk to me. So from, you know, Vancouver to Ottawa and points in between, and I'm sure uh, there was a number of folks out east too who are monitoring this and also reached out to their members of parliament. So their members of parliament are listening to what their constituents are saying their constituents are saying, go talk to this gentleman. Um, I've listened to him speak. He has some good points. Uh, he's, you know, and uh, their members of parliament did their jobs. And, you know, quite frankly, I commend them for their courage because I know in this media landscape that we're in right now, they're under a lot of uh, pressure because they had the audacity to speak uh, <laughs> with a Canadian citizen who has a problem with... Uh, you know, with these with these mandates and uh, and the direction that the federal government is going with them. The legacy media was at your meeting. There was both CTV, CBC. Uh, do you think the legacy media has given you a fair coverage? Or do you th find that they tend to have a bias against you? Um, I'm not paying a lot of attention to it. I do this most of the day, and then we manage. Um, you know, everything that's involved, with, including logistics and movement and safety with uh with this marching so it's uh not something i pay a lot of attention to but from what i've seen no it's not really fair um and uh you know i've yet to have a like a sit down interview uh with somebody who um was not going to try to paint me as a freedom convoy organizer because that's not what i am i mean is it <laughs> It's right. completely inaccurate to say that because I was in British Columbia uh, when the convoy and the, and the protests in Ottawa were going on. So, you know, I'm James Top. I have my own uh, 
things to say about these uh, things that are happening. And um, I don't think that's actually covered, you know, and I know there's a lot of criticism, but I don't actually, you know, have in the way that you and I are talking, um, you know, you're asking questions. I'm giving you my answers. Uh, this has not really happened with members of, uh, of the legacy media. And then when it does happen, it's happened twice with the CBC and a CTV interview. Uh, there is no, uh, there's more interest in who I spoke to at uh, the meeting and what their names were as opposed to, um, you know, what, <laughs> What were some of the trials, travails, victories that you had on this uh, 4,000 kilometer uh, march, right? You clearly had to sleep at lots of different places because you've been doing this for over 100 days. Uh, how has that been set up? Have you been camping? Have you been sleeping in a trailer? Have you been going to hotels? Uh, how how yeah, is that? Uh, you know, it's, fortunate, it's unfortunate that's not being reported on because it's an amazing story when, uh, like I said, I made the announcement I was going to do this thing. And um, almost immediately, everybody, everybody, uh, a number of people came forward to 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 assist me. They wanted to be a part of this, and I started to realize that this this meant a, this meant something to people. So to answer your question, you know, we pretty much uh, we were able to sleep. You know, people opened their homes to us. Total strangers invited us to, to stay at their homes. We slept in the basements. We slept, you know, or they arranged for us to stay at a church basement or in a, in, a, in a town hall, like in a small town like Yak, BC. We stayed in the town hall there. So um, in that way, it was, uh, you know, this has been an amazing experience. But we've, uh, yeah, like accommodations have been buried in the last little while. Uh, we stayed in hotels. Um, and honestly, or hotels or motels, I should say. Um, and, and and I used to be I used to be posted. I used to work at CFP Petawawa, so I have friends in the area that let us stay at their houses. And if I hadn't been able to, you know, get a good sleep at night, I don't, you know, that would have been uh, that's been a factor in, in my being able to get this far on foot. You know, being able to sleep at night and. Uh, Rest my rest my body. Right. Uh, and what's the plan to get back home? Are you going to be walking back to BC? Are you going to be driving, or do you plan to fly in an airplane now that the mandates have been lifted? Hold up on that mandates have been lifted thing. They've uh, been suspended temporarily, which is one of the reasons. And I'm not sure if this is a question of yours or not, but I get it um, periodically. So if uh, We'll see. I, I don't know yet. I haven't really. I got some family in the area I would like to visit for a couple of days potentially. And if I do go home and I'm able, I, I do, I probably will drive. And um, let's not forget, sorry, with, with, with regards to the, the suspension, quote unquote, of uh, travel restrictions. Um, you know, they are there. They still exist. They're, being, they're hanging it over our heads. And uh, I think that needs to be recognized. That's one of the reasons why, you know, when I heard that, uh, it wasn't like I was just going to stop and turn around and go home, right? Like this is uh, the, the mandates, I believe, should be fully repealed and removed because I think that uh, they've done more harm than good at this point. Right, for sure. Well, James Top, thank you so much for, for speaking with me today. Uh, God bless you, and I wish you the, the best of luck and energy for the remaining days of your walk across Canada. Have a good one, and thank you for uh, interviewing me and uh, giving me a chance to tell my side of the story. Be sure to check out True North for the latest fair and objective coverage of freedom events, rallies, and protests across Canada, as well as the latest civil liberties issues. And please consider making a donation by visiting donate.tnc.news. For True North, I'm Ilikante Nathiel.